You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everybody, to the Greek Grid Iron. I am Ethan Hrissadulu coming at you with a second upload today. We are previewing the New England Patriots visiting the Buffalo Bills in a third round of the AFC East matchup here in Super Wild Card Weekend. If you guys are excited for the Wild Card to start things off for the playoffs, if you're excited for the Pats and Bills, or you're just excited to see that there's a second video, hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the previews as we roll through the week and now let's just fly right into this video and start discussing the Patriots visiting the Buffalo Bills in the third round of this AFC heavyweight matchup here so we got the Patriots going into Buffalo sounds like the weather is not going to be good going into this game which should favor the Patriots based off of recent history. I don't know, but I'm hearing from what I've read and seen around that the weather does not look to be too, too great in Buffalo. And for some reason, Buffalo seems to be struggling in their home field weather, which is very odd considering they're a team that should be built to play in the Buffalo weather. Now, Let's dive into some X factors. Let's talk about the key players of the game, the guys that I think will make the biggest difference and who I think should step up to make the biggest difference for each one of these teams. We'll start with the visitors, the New England Patriots. Matthew Judon is probably the first one on the list. The guy has been an absolute freak of nature and such a great free agent signing for the New England Patriots. He's brought kind of a mean and nasty streak to the team, something that I think has kind of been missing from that Patriots defensively, especially last year. Uh, And honestly, he's brought an attitude that I think um, it's kind of like the Ravens swag, I guess you could say, that they have over there in Baltimore. If there's one team that's always been, you know, like no BS, not afraid of anybody, a team that goes into New England and plays them and plays them well and has beaten them at home in the playoffs, this was like the perfect guy for Bill Belichick to get on his defense. And I think he has stood out and made a great, great addition to this team. Second guy on my list, Damian Harris, nearly 1,000 yards. The guy had 15 touchdowns. I mean, talk about just a freak at the running back position. The bell cow to Bill Belichick's running game plan that he's been running pretty much all year long. He's been an excellent piece for this team and I think has made a massive difference. Third one being Hunter Henry, uh, another free agent addition to the team, part of that 120 or $50 million, I think, whatever it was that New England spent during this free agency. Uh, Hunter Henry's been an awesome piece as well, career high in touchdowns, having Mac Jones throw him the football, definitely like the security blanket and the, the, the kind of like go-to guy when things get real tough. Hunter Henry's been very consistent for the team and has been a great key player. But the biggest and most important player, I think, going into this game and one that is going to have to have a big game for the Patriots to be successful and potentially upset the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo during this playoff game has got to be cornerback J.C. Jackson. Now, his season numbers, real quick, just to run it by you guys. 12 pass breakups, 8 interceptions, a forced fumble, the guy had 9 turnovers, a 47.8 passer rating when targeted in his direction, and then also allowing only a 51% completion percentage. It was a 50-50 shot when the quarterback was thrown at J.C. Jackson that that ball got completed, which is very impressive. Now, here's the stat line from the second time these two teams played each other. Not the first time when the Patriots won, but when the Bills beat the Patriots at home. He allowed 69 yards a touchdown, had no pass breakups, was allowing 13.8 yards a catch, and allowed five receptions off the nine targets that went his way. And uh, Josh Allen had a passer rating of 117.4 when he was targeting J.C. Jackson during this game. One of the biggest issues, I think, defensively during that game was just the fact that they could not slow Josh Allen down, and he was having an absolute field day picking apart this defense. And for the Patriots to be successful in this game, J.C. Jackson needs to look a lot less that guy in game two and more like the guy in game one that shut things down. Obviously, the weather was a big factor, but he played a key role in that game, and he has been a key piece to this secondary all year long with the eight interceptions. I mean, the guy has been locked down. He forces a a turnover what feels like every other game minimum. He's had a couple of interceptions in two different games this year. The guy is 
excellent at what he does. He shuts down his side of the field. He forces turnovers. Quarterbacks are not comfortable throwing his way just because of how many career interceptions the guy already has in such a short amount of time and is somebody that the Patriots need to have step up if they want a shot at beating the Bills. Now, on the Bills side of things, handful of guys you could look at here. Of course, the wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. Maybe not quite the season he had last year, but still the number one guy, the guy that basically helped Josh Allen go from a good quarterback to a great quarterback. And honestly, at this point, an excellent quarterback, depending on the day that he's having. Because, I mean, he has days where he's, he's a top five guy, period, end of story. You have Stephon Diggs. Then if you're looking at defensive leaders, I I feel like I've seen them in conferences sitting next to each other a lot too, so it's funny I bring both of them up here. But Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, two guys that I feel lead that defense and the defensive backfield specifically. If those guys are having a great game, that Bills defense is playing really, really well. They're preventing the big plays. They're they're keeping their defense organized. When I look at like the leadership on that side of the ball, it's got to be those two guys. They do a great job leading this defense. And, you know, if they're having a good game, the Bills defense is having a good game and the deals the bills are probably dropping like 40 points on a team and allowing maybe three points but I think the biggest key factor and player for this game and the guy that is going to make the most difference in the end result for this one and it's a pretty obvious one has got to be the quarterback Josh Allen and I don't think anyone's really surprised at me saying that he is the difference between the bills team moving along and winning games or coming to a dead stop and not winning a game I feel like the bills I don't want to say they're one-dimensional, but they do rely a lot on Josh Allen, and maybe it's not one-dimensional. Maybe they're like, instead of three-dimensional, like 1.75-dimensional maybe, something like that, if you want to really start getting goofy with the geometry there. But 36 passing touchdowns, 4,400 passing yards. He had 15 interceptions, kind of a high number, but not bad considering the amount of points he was putting on the board. He also had the six rushing touchdowns, 760-some-odd yards. He did have eight fumbles, though. Hang on to the football, Josh Allen. Uh, but yeah, Josh Allen, in order for the Bills to really come out of this game successful, he, he he needs to have a great game. I feel like when you look at the way the Patriots played them the first time, Josh Allen did not have a great game. Obviously, the crazy 40 to 60 mile per hour wins aside, um, if the Bills aren't having Josh Allen be the engine of the offense, uh, nobody else I really think can fill that role. And he needs to be able to get, keep the ball moving and they need to keep that air attack alive and, and aggressive for them to be able to be successful and move on from the Patriots and head into the divisional round. Now, for the keys to the game and kind of just like the matchups I'm, I'm going to be keeping an eye on and things that I think are worth noting as we go into this game and start talking about it some more. The first one has got to be the battle of these two defenses. These are two top defenses in the league, like top five defenses in the league when you really break things down. Points per game allowed. Bills are first at 17. Patriots are number two at 17.8. Yards a play for the Pats. They're tied for third at 5.1. The Bills, they're sitting at 4.6 yards a play. They are the only team under five yards and it's and and I think the separation's like 0.4 yards to the team that's in second place whoever that ends up being turnover wise both of these teams tied for third place they both have forced 30 turnovers turnover machines they're able to you know flip the field on a dime and get their offense the football in good field position and allow them to potentially put up some more points which makes sense because both of these teams are fairly solid when it comes to points a game you look at the bills they're sitting at 28.4 they're sitting third in the league and then the patriots are sitting at 27.2 which is six they're both top 10 points per game teams And realistically, a lot of it has to do with just how many turnovers these defenses can force and allow their offense to get the ball back, steal a possession, and and put them in a good spot field position-wise to put more points on the board. Now, the biggest difference between these two defenses, and I think something that will ultimately kind of factor into the end result of this game, is just how effective both of these teams are getting after the quarterback. Uh, Like I said, they're both really great defenses and, and arguably top five defenses for the both of them. But the Bills are far more effective at getting after the quarterback. They have 176 pressures total on the year. That's quarterback hits, hurries, things like that, knockdowns, whatever you you name it, whatever's in that pressures category, it's all in there. They're six best in the league. They're also tied at 11th with 42 sacks. So they're able to get after the quarterback, but they're also able to get him down on the ground before he lets go of that ball. 
The Patriots, on the other hand, not too far behind, six sacks behind, but that puts them tied at 18th in the league, and they only have 154 pressures. They're just outside the, uh, or just inside the top 20, excuse me, at 19th. So when it comes down to it, I think whatever defense is more aggressive, able to force more turnovers and really get after the quarterback is going to be a very large deciding factor in just how successful the other team's offense is going to be, obviously, and ultimately turn out the victor. As for a second key to the game and one that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on in this matchup, because like I said, it sounds like the weather is not going to be great going into this game, is going to be that Patriots ground attack going up against the Bills defense. After that first game that these two teams played, you could tell the Bills defense was not happy. They, they passed, the Patriots passed three times on the Bills. They knew the ball was coming on the ground and they could not stop it. The Patriots average about 126.5 yards a game rushing, eighth best in the league. I think the big question realistically is ask, that everyone is asking right now, at least in the New England area, from what I've been hearing on the radio a lot, is how much does Bill Belichick trust Mac Jones and how much are they actually going to run in this game, weather permitting? Um, I would definitely say probably not as much as the first game, but more than the second game that these two teams played each other. Uh, I expect the ground game to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, there's going to be a lot more heavy set formations. It sounds like a helicopter just flew over my house, <laughs> but um, I don't know if you guys are able to hear that or not, but that was pretty loud for me. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to run often, especially if the weather starts to really get uh, get bad. I don't want to say Mac Jones can't win the game with his arm, but the ground game has been so effective in New England. If you can lean on it and really get after that Bills run defense, uh, they're somewhere in the middle of the pack tied at 13th with about 100 and roughly 10 yards a game allowed. Uh, you know, they're going to be somewhere, I think, between that 222 yards in game one that they had and the 149 in game two. Um, and, and I think that the focus will be probably more so like maybe two to one pat, two to one run to pass, depending on how, again, the weather shakes out. But I do expect to see this Patriots ground game come out in full force. It won them the first game that these two teams played. And I think Bill Belichick is going to kind of refocus the game plan and try to get back into more of that come game three when these two play this Saturday. The last piece that I have in mind is something that I think is really going to decide the fat, just the, the end result of this game. And this is probably the biggest one of these three things that I have listed here in my notes is going to be the Patriots pass rush versus the Bills O-line and Josh Allen as a whole entire unit because they kind of work in unison together here with what I'm about to say. The Bills sacks allowed. 27 on the year second best in the league josh allen does not really go down due to pass rush the reason for that obviously josh allen is very versatile he can extend plays with his legs he is very athletic you can, obviously the 763 rushing yards that this dude had on the ground this year it has a lot to do with his ability to get out of the pocket when it starts to collapse and make something happen and make a big difference the Patriots, like I had already mentioned earlier, only 154 pressures, the 36 sacks on the year. They're somewhere closer to like the lower side than the higher side in the league there. A big part of this game is really going to come down to three things for the Patriots here. Can they get after Josh Allen effectively and efficiently? And um, what is the other word that I'm looking for here? Consistently, excuse me. Um, can they finish the play? So not only get after him, but get him down on the ground before he escapes the pocket or throws the ball to a receiver or away. And then also, can they prevent him from killing them on the QB scramble? The last time that these two teams played, Josh Allen ran for 64 yards on them. Well, that's not a ton. I mean, that, that is a fair amount of yards to just be letting Josh Allen kind of dance all over you and, you know, prevent you guys from getting the ball back or, or maybe stopping them on third and six or third and seven, whatever it may be. The Patriots need to be able to get after Josh Allen. The Bills offensive line, they're they're solid, good somewhere around there definitely not the best in the league um but with how just elusive josh allen can be and how effective of a runner he can be and his ability to extend plays and you know throw on the run and things like that they're going to really need to dial up a, a good game plan to try to keep him contained for the most part and hope that you know maybe rushing for and being able to drop back as many as possible is going to be an effective way for them to get after allen and, and hopefully try to just limit his production on the ground because it is a problem for a lot of defenses, not just the Patriots. Now, 
a couple of disadvantages that I want to go over with you guys. I did the same thing in my last video. I want to do the same thing here with the Patriots and the Bills. Uh, I want to focus on one big key disadvantage that I think each team is carrying going into this game that the other team is definitely probably keeping an eye on or at least knows in the back of their mind going into this game. For the Patriots, it's it's a, it's more of a blatantly obvious one, and I've heard a lot of people talking about it, and I feel like it's probably, the despite how much I hate to hear people talk about this, it is kind of the truth. They're going into this game with a rookie quarterback. Um, I don't like, I don't believe in the whole rookie wall thing or whatever that may be. I don't think that's a real thing. I just think that it's just the natural progression of a young player trying to grasp the league at one of the hardest positions in the NFL as a quarterback. Um, he lacks experience. You know, he does have the big game experience from the college level, but obviously the NFL is a completely different beast. Uh, it's a whole different world. It's not the college game. This is the NFL game that he's playing now. So it's a completely different thing, but, um, the inexperience and just, like where he is currently at in his development, I think he has a lot of promise and I think he's going to be a fairly successful quarterback in the league at the very least. Um, and I definitely expect him to keep the Patriots in contention for a long time because he's accurate. He makes great decisions, but I don't think he's quite there yet to really push them over the top and in the Patriots to really be able to hang on him week in and week out to, you know, shoot it out with somebody like Josh Allen, who went through growing pains in his own right. Josh Allen was not a great quarterback his very first year. Um, you know, and I, I'll never forget talking to uh, a, a friend of mine that's a Bills fan and, and it kind of just like laughing at the, the, the almost like meltdown that he had in the playoffs against the Houston Texans a few years ago. And I, and I don't even really know if meltdown is the right word, but it ended up not being a really great end to what was not a not a great season a couple of years ago. Um, but or a solid season that ended poorly a couple of years ago, I should say. But um, the rookie quarterback thing, I think, is probably the biggest minus for the Patriots and obviously their biggest disadvantage going into this one. As for the Bills, the biggest thing, and I have two things labeled here because the two things kind of concern me, and I don't know how much the first thing I'm going to say concerns some people, but I think it is definitely something worth keeping an eye on here because it is kind of a big deal, and it's something that I talked about a lot in the offseason prior to this year and has pretty much reared its ugly head up to this point now. Um... And that's got to be their inability to run with the running backs. The The Bills' rushing yards per game number in terms of, and of course, the way the quarterback position has evolved, quarterbacks have become far more a piece of the running game than they ever have been in years past. But the ground game is, in my opinion, what you do with your running backs when you're in you know, a heavy set formation, ground and pound. You look at what the Patriots do, something like the Colts or you know what the Ravens do. They obviously scramble a lot with Lamar Jackson, but they also have very capable running backs, things like that. With Josh Allen, including all of his yards, the 763 that he has on the ground this year, Josh Allen was literally a quarter of a way away from 1,000 yards this year. Unbelievable number. Um, 129 point yard, nine yards a game. When you subtract the 763 yards that he had on the ground without Josh Allen, the bills only have 85 yards a game on the ground with their running backs. That's 31st in the league. They're only ahead of the Houston Texans right behind the Atlanta Falcons who are sitting at 84.4 or 85.4. Excuse me. That is a bit of a concern in my opinion. And I think kind of what cost them the playoffs last year against the Chiefs, you know, they built their whole team. The idea was to build this team to be able to contend with the Chiefs. And, you know, they're a contender for sure. And I don't I don't know if they're as good as they were last year. But if you can't run the football in January, you're not going to be able to get past those teams that can. That is a concern, in my opinion. Whether you think it's the biggest concern for the team or not, maybe up to debate for you. The other one thing that I have noted on here is as an offense, they've committed 113 penalties this year. That's 27th worst in the league. Uh, so they do kind of shoot themselves in the foot a lot as well. So that is like a second side note piece that I had because that is pretty concerning in my opinion. If your team, if your offense is not disciplined and you're constantly setting yourself back, how can you really be successful, especially when you're going up against teams where in the playoffs you tend to get the teams that are far more disciplined because the more disciplined teams tend to win more games and tend to make the playoffs more. Um, obviously, there's exceptions to that, but for the most part. Um, but yeah, no, the inability to run with running backs and the penalties thing, a couple of things, in my opinion, depending on what you think is more important are a couple of things. And, and it was supposed to be just one, but it turned out to be two for them. Those are the two big things that kind of popped out to me when I was looking at everything. Um, but uh, disadvantages aside, 
Let's talk over-unders, the winners, the betting odds, that kind of stuff. You know, what are people saying and what do I think about these? Again, I am in no mean, like by no means am I some betting guru or anything like that. This is like the last few weeks have been my real first like diving into the whole like betting world and kind of understanding what's going on there and just kind of giving my thoughts and opinions on it. So take it for what you will, but it is not betting advice. Uh, the Bills are sitting at minus four favorites at this current moment. Patriots obviously sitting at plus four. The over-under is sitting at 44 as well. Um, as for the Bills at minus four favorites, that is definitely something I think the Bills can cover um, considering how much they were able to beat the Patriots by the last time these two teams played and also just how high-powered the Bills offense can be. And if the Patriots have a bad game, um, when they have bad games, they it does not really look good scoring-wise for them. So I could definitely see the Bills winning by at least like a touchdown or so going through that game should the Bills get the win there. Uh, and if things are really going their way, it seems very likely. I, I, I really like the Bills minus four. The Pats plus four uh, probably is going to be how it goes as well. Um, they're probably kicking a field goal to win or or they get like a late score that puts them up that four points that they need to get the win there. Um, so definitely a realistic opportunity for both teams. The over under sitting at 44, that's something that for the over, I, I, I kind of like the over there. I, I, I The way that these two teams played the last time they played fairly high scoring game. The weather, though, is going to be a factor in that. Depending on how bad the weather gets, the more and more I like the under. But I definitely think in fair conditions, 44 is definitely something that this can cross over. And it, we got quite a bit of time before that, you know, that final weather report and what we're actually going to get for the game ends up being. So this could probably change and sway maybe a little bit higher to like 45 or something like that, 46, if we get closer to the game and the weather looks better. But the over-under, I think there's a lot of variables for it, and right now it's a little too hard to call. I do like the over for 44, but I could see it being under 44 as well if conditions get really, really poor. As for the final score and what I think the game is going to be at, and you'll kind of see my true opinion on the over-under, I do have the Bills taking the W here, 30-20. to 20. I think the Patriots... Mm, I just, I just don't know if they can keep up offensively if things are really going well for the Bills. Uh, I don't want to doubt Bill Belichick and the Patriots because that tends to be not a good idea. But w when I look at everything and just both of these teams, I think the Bills are the more talented team. And um, I, I, you know, they have good coaching, great quarterback, you know, really good wide receivers, a really good defense. They just have a little bit more than I think the Patriots do. And it's still excuse me again, Josh Allen's or not Josh Allen, excuse me, jumping back and forth between these quarterbacks here. Mac Jones's first year in the league. Um, I don't want him to be one and done. I want the Patriots to win, but I think the bills are going to get the W here again, 30 to 20. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below my Pats and bills fans. What are you excited for? Who do you think is going to be the stars of this game? Who's going to make the standouts? Who's going to make the big play to push their team into the divisional round of the playoffs and go past that super wild card weekend. I appreciate you guys' time. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you all in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and have a, a good one.